Hi folks, I'm Josh Gaughan, the tool repair and maintenance man here at the William T. Spader Company. The William T. Spader Company was created by Mr. William T. Spader in his backyard in 1914. Pretty impressive. The company is still run and owned by the Spader family today here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Any search of social media outlets like Instagram or YouTube, you can find all kinds of things about welding and photographs of beautiful, meticulous examples of welding. And it's kind of an art and it's a skill that's learned over time. And we do a lot of welding here at the William T. Spader Company. So today we'll talk a little bit about the different types of welding, just very basic. We're not gonna try to make you a professional welder, and while we're at it, we'll talk about some of the things that professional welders use to protect themselves while they're on the job. So welding is basically melting metals together. And the typical way we do that is with electric arc welding. So a welding machine creates electricity and it uses that electricity to melt the two pieces of metal you want to join together and a filler metal to help hold them together. It's like, kind of like glue. So there's three basic ways to do that. There's MIG, TIG, and stick. And MIG welding stands for metal inert gas. This is a MIG welding gun. And it would use a spool of wire attached to the welding machine that would spit right out of the end, almost like a squirt gun. And this little trigger turns everything on and off and you would use it on, a, say, a piece of pipe, just like this, and use it to weld two pieces of metal together. It uses a gas that also comes out of the end to shield the, the fresh weld so that it doesn't oxidize or deteriorate, and that's important. This is a TIG welding torch. TIG, again, stands for Tungsten Inert Gas. It uses a gas that flows out the end to protect the weld. And there's a little pointy thing sticking out. That's the tungsten. And the tungsten is used to flow the electricity and jump across and create an arc to melt the metals together. That's why it's called arc welding. And the TIG welding torch is much smaller and easier to use for finer work. And the welder can use this piece that's attached to control how hot or cold the weld is, how much of the metal they're going to melt at one time. And the filler metal they would hold in their hand, and I don't have the correct one, but I'm going to use this as a stand-in, where they would create the arc and melt the metals together and feed their filler metal in by hand. Very delicate and very exact, an art. Whereas the MIG, they just pull the trigger and the filler metal shoots right out. So then we'll talk about the most basic, which is stick. Stick welding. And it works in the same way in that it's going to use electricity to melt the metals together. And this is referred to as a stinger. And you'll see why. We're going to take our welding electrode. This is our electrode, just like the tungsten was. But it's also just known as a rod, a welding rod. And it's covered in a flux. It doesn't use gas. It uses this flux on the outside of the welding electrode to shield the weld. It clamps right in the stinger. And it can clamp in in different ways. Whoops at different angles. And when they use it to strike an arc, they have to kind of tap like a stinger, kind of stinging. But all of these types of welding, and they're known as welding processes, create ultraviolet rays because it's a very, very bright light. So let's talk about some of the way the welders protect themselves from that light. First off is a welding helmet. It covers their face and the sides of their face and protects their neck from those ultraviolet rays. It's got a shade, a window with a 
shade to protect their eyes and still be able to see what they're doing. And this one's out of the repair pile because I am the tool repairman. But it would go on their head. And if you've ever seen welders in action, you see, may, might see them doing this a lot because it tips their helmet right down over their face when they're ready to work. Gloves, you, they have to protect their hands. Their hands are very close to a, a heat source and uh, it gets hot. So they've got thick, heavy welding gloves, leather welding gloves to protect their hands and a coat, which I'll put on right now to demonstrate. It's just like any other coat, except it's a, a very nice shade of green and it's flame resistant. So that protects their arms and their torso from the ultraviolet rays we talked about that come off of the weld. And like I just mentioned, any, any bits of hot anything that could come off and burn them. So now that our welders have covered their arms and torso and their hands and their faces to work with something that's very hot, now they're hot and kind of sweaty, but the top of their head and scalp could still be exposed. So they would use a welder's cap. And I don't have a welder's cap because I am not a professional welder, but I do have my bicycle cap or cycling cap, which is very similar in design, but not materials. This is not flame resistant. It is not flame retardant. You should never use a cycling cap in place of a welding cap. But we're just going to use it here for reference. Mine has a little piece of pizza on the bill and I use my cycling cap under my helmet and I use it to protect my eyes from the sun or maybe backwards to protect my neck from the sun. And the welders might do the same, turn it backwards, protect their neck. But if they had to weld out of position, and that just means if they had to contort their body to weld in a way that's not just right here in front of them where you could easily reach. If they had to weld, say, maybe twist their bodies up around and make a weld up here and there's something in their way, they might take their cap and turn that bill over their ear to keep any bits of hot metal from falling into their ear. Even though they have their helmet on and it protects the side of their face, I've spoken with our, uh, our professional welders and they have confirmed that the worst pain that they have ever felt is when you get hot metal in your ear. So, that said, maybe we could go inside and talk to Brian, our fab shop foreman and professional welder and see what he has to say about it. Hey, we were talking on the internet outside about uh, the basics of welding, just the very basic stuff. So. What's all this? Well, this is our setup we have in the fab shop. Yeah. It's a boom that was actually built here by us. It holds all the things we need to do every process of welding. We have our wire feeder for MIG welding. We have our stick torch and our TIG. Everything's set up here along with our grinders that we have to use during our processes. We have our guns. We have our wire feeder, our machine. We mainly do this here because we have manipulators that spin the pipe for us. Mm. When you can spin everything, it's just quicker to do it that way. When we're welding in the field, we utilize mainly stick welding. So stick welding, there's less to carry around. There's mm. no bottles, no gas. There's one machine and one stinger. That way you can get the job done easier in, in tight spaces, which Makes is what we work in a lot is, is tight spaces. Makes sense. Now TIG, TIG welding, we do both in the shop and in the field. A lot of TIG welding is done with stainless or alloys. It's mainly done for cleanliness. Mm -hmm. We actually work in a lot of food plants as well. Okay. You get into the food process, everything has to be clean. So TIG welding is what we mainly use there. Sometimes we'll use multiple processes on the same weld. Certain alloys, like chrome, for example, and it's not the chrome you might think of oh. on a car bumper. Oh, gotcha. But it's, it actually okay. looks like regular steel pipe. Mm -hmm. It's an alloy mix which has chromium in it, and it's in there for, to make it stronger. Sometimes it's a high flow, sometimes it's a chemical material that 
is flowing through the pipe that, mm -hmm. that makes things uh, break down. Okay. And that's where you use that. But what we have to do is we have to TIG the first pass. Okay. So the inside. So once around. Yep. Okay. And then we usually stick cover that. We just recently did a job, which was all chrome. It was an emergency job that we had to use this, these two processes. We mm -hmm. had to TIG the, TIG the root and stick the cover. Now, the person we did that for requires x-rays. They x-ray the weld just like you would x-ray a bone, see if it's broken. They x-ray the weld to see the inside of it, to make sure everything's clean on the inside. There's no imperfection. Mm, there's a lot more to welding than I thought. Oh yeah. All those people on the internet, do you think they should like and subscribe if they like this stuff? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so too. That's Brian, our fab shop foreman. I'm Josh Gone, tool repair and maintenance man. I br fix everything he breaks. <laughs> Please do come back again. Thanks so much.